Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video we're going to learn how to work this pattern and I have here a baby dress and I call it the baby ruffle dress because it's kind of like a dungaree so it starts with a bib as you can see it's just a square which could easily be your uh, gauge swatch and then you get to the waistline and for the waistline we're going to cast on stitches for the back the sides and the back and as you can see the back is worked in ribbing so it's got a little bit of stretch kind of like an elastic I could say and then the skirt is worked with increases and we have here make one left and make one right increases you can substitute them for kev bees if you want they would just look they would just look a little bit different and we keep on increasing following the pattern and then we end up with a very big skirt and we're going to make it even bigger by putting a ruffle end or a ruffle edge and it reminds me if if i was to knit this in a red yarn it would make me think of that emoji um, <laughs> I don't know I'll try to pop it somewhere so you can see which one I'm talking about but I've designed this pattern for three sizes small medium large and I will give you the measurements because as we all know kids tend to I mean obviously you buy you buy uh, clothes for kids according to the age so it would be uh, not to three three to six six to nine months and then one year two years three years but I I'm not that familiar with kids sizes so I just want to do three sizes obviously you could alter the pattern if you want you could just cast on more stitches but for the size for the sizes that I've done small medium large this is the small and I don't have the measuring tape here but obviously it will all be in the pattern and I'll link the pattern down below where you can go and download a PDF on Ravelry on my Ravelry so yeah uh, we are going to start with the cast on of the bib up here then we're going to get to the waist cast on the stitches for the back and then start working in the round doing the increases and I guess you could call them raglan increases I don't know but we're going to continue doing the increases and now we're going to end up with the ruffle at the bottom. Obviously, if you don't want to do the ruffle, you can just cast off here and have it just as a plain skirt without the ruffle. But I, I think the ruffle makes it look so cute. And then to finish it up, um, you do two straps that I, uh, I figured is better if you cross them over. Obviously, if you don't want to cross them over, you could just, you know, sew, sew them up. Uh, if you cross them over you can let them loose like this uh, so you could swap them straight if you want or you could stitch them up together so they stay crossed all the time and they don't fall off the baby's uh, shoulders and obviously um, you would do button buttonholes on the straps and then the buttons would go on the inside or on the outside of your bib depending on what you choose I've just put safety pins here for now because I need to find some cue buttons and I didn't so hopefully by the time this video goes live I will have pictures with it with buttons but yeah that is the baby ruffle dress so if you're interested in knitting it go in the description down below click the link to take you to the pattern where you can download it and then we go ahead and start knitting it together but this is the yarn I'm going to use to demonstrate how to knit this dress so um, I went ahead and caked, caked one up <laughs> I could say that and I'm going to do the cast on for the for the bib so I'm going to speed that up uh, actually, let me show you how to do the cast on in case you you're new to knitting. So you leave a long tail and for 
DK fingering weight yarn I usually cast on double needles because it's easier to work the first row and we're going to do a slip knot so I hold the yarn like this I go in with my finger and twist going th through with my thumb to pick up the tail and pull it through and then if you pull on the tail you can adjust the uh, size of your slip knot and then you can put your needles through to start the cast on so let me show you that again so hold the yarn like hold the yarn like this go in with your finger twist go in with your thumb reach through to pick up the tail and pull it up and then pull down on the tail to adjust the slip knot that's the slip knot and we're going to cast on so that's one stitch so I'm going to go under with my thumb in with both my needles grab the yarn and pull through so under with my thumb needles in grab the yarn pull through the same way we went in so go in grab the yarn pull through in grab the yarn pull through so you want to cast on as many stitches as you need for the size you're knitting and then we're going to start the garter stitch so now that you've done your cast on, we're ready to work the garter stitch and let me just lay this here so I can point at it as we get to it. So we've done the cast on, now we're going to work the garter stitch here and this is seven rows of just plain knitting and I'll show you a little bit and then you can continue on your own. So if you did the cast on on double needles like this, you just pull on one of them to bring it out and as you can see the cast on is loose now so it's not that hard to knit the first row and all you got to do is knit so go through grab your yarn pull in out in, go in pull pull your yarn pull through through the front oh it's so hard to knit with my plaster. I didn't realize I'm using my fingers so much. All right, so once you've finished the bib, and this, this is what mine looks like, when you finish knitting your right side row, you just start casting on as many stitches um, as the pattern tells you for the size you're knitting. And I've done here some, and I just wanted to show you how I do this cast on. All you got to do is hold the needle like this, put your thumb under the, the yarn, twist it and pull. In, twist and pull. Alright, so once you've um, did the cast on, then we're going to join in the round. And you just prepare to knit magic loop for now until your work is expanded enough to accommodate for the for all the stitches to be spread on on the needles so just come back here just make sure that your work is not twisted because this cast on can easily twist okay Put a stitch marker on so you know that's the beginning of your round. And now over the stitches that um, we already have live here, we're gonna continue doing garter stitch. And on the stitches that we just did the new cast on, we're going to do ribbing. So I'm just put this up like this. And I'm going to start because we're knitting in the round, here we're going to do uh, five purl stitches. So just purl five. One, two, three, four, 
three, four, five. So like I said, we have to do garter stitch, which means we're gonna purl all these stitches to make the garter stitch ridge. So purl all these stitches that um, we have live. This magic loop is not working with me today, I have to say. It's been a while since I've done magic loop, but it's just a little bit at the beginning that you have to do. So purl until we get to the new cast on. See, it's, it's twisting and it's not good. There we go, all straight now. Okay, one more. And now we have to work the cast on that we just did and we're going to work this in ribbing. So we're gonna do knit two, yarn in the front to purl two. Not very easy, but keep up with it. Knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and we keep doing this for seven rounds, and then we're going to start the increases. So I'm going to let you do that. So after a few hours of Netflix and knitting, we are here and I just wanted to knit a bit so you see the increases and I'm going to show you in a second now how you do the increases. But um, last time I left you at the cast on here and I've told you to do 2x2 two two rib at the back and garter stitch at the front and then go into the increases. Now in the pattern there will be a note saying knit one row placing the markers and this is what, what that means. You knit a certain amount of stitches and then you place markers before and after this knit stitch that goes down on in the middle of the increases. And for the first part of the increases, you do you do them every other row, and then once you finish that, you do increases every fourth row. And obviously, for the size that you're knitting, you continue knitting rounds with the increases. And then, once you're done with all the increases, you have to knit just plain knitting, and this is pure Netflix watching knitting just round after round after round you knit the desired length for the skirt of the dress or you know if you're following the pattern with the sizing just knit as many inches as the pattern tells you for the size that you're knitting and then uh, once you're done with that we're going to do the ruffle but let me just show you how to do the increases so this marks the beginning of the round this is the 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 stitch the first stitch in our round and you want to knit up to the first marker so just plain knitting and i'm telling you this is this is really good tv watching knitting 
because you just keep on going you don't do pearls you just do knits and as you can see at this time my cable is nearly filled with the stitches it will get fuller though when I'm done with all the increases but let's knit to the first and we're going to do make one right okay so I'm at the first marker and I'm gonna leave the marker there and I'm going to go in between these two stitches the one that I just knitted and the one after the marker and there's a bar in there can you see the bar and I'm going to bring it from front to back and place it on my left needle like this and then I'm going to knit it through the front loop that's make one right so the increase will lean towards the right then I'm going to slip the marker knit my middle stitch slip the next marker and now I have to do make one left and in order to do that I go the same in the middle in between to get that bar and I'm going to bring it this time from back to front like that and I'm going to knit it through the back loop okay so that's make one left then you're going to knit to the next marker and always before the marker you make one right after the marker you make one left so your stitches will go right and left so just knit to the next marker and please excuse my fingers I've been uh, <laughs> cleaning pomegranate seeds for my husband and your your hands and your nails they just turn yellow like turmeric that reminds me I did um, try I tried to dye yarn with pomegranate and I, I can show you I'll, I'll show you just let me show you again the make one right and make one left and then I'll give you a sneak peek of my yellow yarn oh there it is I said it yellow okay so I'm one I'm I'm um, at the marker so I'm gonna pick up the bar in between from front to back put it on my left needle and knit it through the front that's make one right then I'm gonna slip the marker knit one slip the other marker and now I have to make one left so I'm gonna take the bar in between from back to front this time and I'm going to knit it through the back loop so that is make one left and continue doing all the increases that the pattern tells you and then knit the um, just the straight section before the ruffle but as I promised here it is this is my pomegranate um, dyed yarn and I have to say I did not think it would turn this yellow but um, it's it's a little bit of a mustardy yellow a bit darker than the turmeric dye but I think it's really nice there it is yeah and this is a this is an avocado yarn I've done last week that turned really nice and pink but yeah, I'll see you when we're ready to knit the ruffle for the dress. So we are on the last section of the baby dress and I've done the ruffle and I'll show you how to work it in a second. But I wanted to show you the straps. So I've done one strap here and I, would give, I will give you instructions of how long I'd say you need the strap but to be honest uh, you know you can knit it as long as you want it's quite stretchy so you just have to I think the best way is to just measure it uh, measure the baby to see how long you want to knit the strap but here as you can see I've done this much and towards the end of it I've done three buttonholes and I've done three because okay obviously you know if if you're knitting this for someone else's baby and you don't know the size then they can adjust the length 
by um, using one of these three buttonholes. And I'll show you here how, how to do a buttonhole. Uh, so for the straps, you cast on five or six stitches, depending how wide you want it. I have here six stitches and I just did garter stitch, so knit every stitch. And when you get to the point where you want to do a buttonhole, you want to knit one, two, three, okay? Then you want to do a yarn over, knit two together, and knit the last stitch. So that, that's a buttonhole, can you see it? When you turn your work and you knit all the stitches, including the yarn over, you can see the buttonhole. Oops, so just knit all the stitches. Oops. Can you see? There's the buttonhole. So that's my third buttonhole. And I just want to knit a few more rows in order to cast off. And then the next thing I'm going to show you is how to work the ruffle. And I decided to just work the ruffle on the skirt, on the skirt of the dress, and then show you in a mini section ruffle because um, we would be here forever if I was to knit the ruffle all around the skirt on camera. Let's bind off here. So to bind off, you just knit one stitch, knit the second, and then pass that first stitch over the second. Knit another one, pass the stitch over. Knit another one, pass the stitch over. And we'll keep doing that until we run out of stitches. Here we go, the last one. Go through again and then break your yarn. All right, so that's the strap done. Okay, and let me just show you the ruffle. This is what it looks like. So you finished the decreases and then you work a certain amount of um, rows or I think I have here three inches and then you start to knit the ruffle and as you can see the, the ruffle is um, a series of yarn overs, SSK, SK2P and knit two together and then you finish with a beautiful bind off and it gives, it doesn't just gives a ruffle, it gives the edge can you see some of these um, sections make it a bit wavy? And I have here the notes. So the ruffle is worked on a multiple of four stitches. So let's just cast on eight stitches to start this ruffle. So I'm going to do a slip knot and cast on seven more. So two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And obviously this is the ruffle worked in the flat. You would have yours worked um, in the round. So I will give you the instructions to work the ruffle in the round. Let me just pull all through these stitches and then we can start with row number one. because obviously you would start on the right side row for the ruffle. Okay. I'll put that down on the floor. So the pattern will tell you purl one, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one. That's the repeat. So we're just gonna do it one more time. 
on these four stitches. Purl one, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one. So you would repeat that all the way around. Anyway, so pearl the pearls and knit the knits. That's what you do for the second row. So I'm just gonna pearl these pearls and knit that one. So yeah, every other row, you just pearl the pearls and knit the knits. And obviously, you know, you work it in the round. Okay, row number three, is purl one, knit one, yarn over, knit three, yarn over, knit one. So now we have six, um, we, we um, two, four, six, eight stitches, but we increased two from six stitches that we had before. So um, I'll show you one more time. So purl one, knit one, yarn over, knit three, yarn over, knit one. Row number five, as you can see, we started here and our work is expanding. So um, row number five, per one, knit one, yarn over, knit five, yarn over, knit one. Okay, so now we have two, four, six, eight, ten stitches. So, pearl one, knit one, yarn over, knit five, yarn over, oh, knit five, yarn over, knit one. For the next row it's row number seven and this is a bit more tricky because in, instead of just having knit pearls and yarn overs we're going to have some decreases so I'm going to start with a pearl one knit one yarn over SSK so slip one slip a second one and knit through the back loop yeah yarn over slip two stitches it's a bit hard knit one and pass those two those two stitches over that's an sk s2kp then i'm going to do a yarn over knit two together yarn over knit one so that's the repeat so let's do it one more time purl one knit one yarn over slip slip knit through the back loop yarn over slip two stitches knit one pass those two stitches over yarn over knit two together and knit one. That's the repeat. Let me just make sure that I've done the repeat properly here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, ten stitches. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, row number eight. Knit the knits and purl the pearls. If you're working it in the round, you would have a purl one, knit nine. 
repeat. I'm working it in the flat so I have purl nine knit one. Okay, and now row number nine. I'm going to have a purl one, knit two, yarn over, SSK, slip, slip, knit, slip, slip, knit through the back loop, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit two. That's the repeat. Okay, let's do it again. Purl one, knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit through the back loop, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one. That's row number nine. Row number ten, we're just gonna knit the knit knits and purl the purls again. If you're working this in the round, you would have purl one knit nine. And then um, the, ne the next would be the bind off row. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. So we're going to knit one, knit the second, pass the knitted stitch over, knit another one, pass the stitch over, knit another one, pass the stitch over. So keep doing that until you finish your round or all your stitches. And that's what makes the ruffle. Let's just put that back there. So as you can see, we started here with, with uh, four stitches and we ended up with 10 stitches. So that's what made our work go like all um, roughly like this. Now, the next thing that you want to do is start weaving in the ends. And you weave in um, the ends where you attached your yarn. So as you can see here, I attached yarn, so I have to weave in that end. And then um, after that, you want to arrange your um, dress like this and then you would put, you would sew the strap, put it behind on the back like that. On the right side of the uh, decrease, or increase, sorry, on the right side of the increase like that and then you just stitch that up and you put it diagonally. Then you take the other one, obviously with the end without the buttonholes, put it on the left side of the, incre of the increases here and let them crisscross like that, yeah? And once you stitch those together, all you need to do is sew your buttons up. You could sew them on the outside so you would have the, the straps um, with the buttons showing or you can sew them on the inside and have the straps behind with the buttons like that. It, it's entirely up to you what you want to do. And once you're done with that, then your dress is ready. Oh, sorry, there it goes, my background. Oops. Yeah, your dress will be ready. And this is what it looks like. And it's so cute. And I think it would be so nice with a white uh, tee or white t-shirt or white long sleeve shirt and some white tights or some like different color tights would be very cute but yeah that's my baby ruffle dress and i will link down below in the description 
um, the pattern. You can go on Ravelry and download the PDF pattern and start knitting it. But yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.